Uh, welcome to Behind the Door series number six. Uh, today we are going to talk about COVID and uh, how it interlays with grief and some of the things that are going on right now uh, in, in the world of our clients um, specifically, but also other people as well. Um, Obviously, I mean, COVID itself and, and the havoc it's causing and the death it's causing and, and the infection rates that it's causing, uh, there's a lot of grief that goes with that. I wanted to more specifically talk about um, some things that are going on with, with, our, with our consumers um, and their caregivers. So uh, grief very, I don't know if how familiar you are with the five stages of grief, and, and I don't even think of them as stages. Um, stages, I think, is is Kind of like a video game like you do this stage and you move to the next stage um, i see them more as a as a spear um, that you bounce back from one thing to the other and you know they are denial or feeling like something's in a dream like this can't be happening uh, there is bargaining so thinking if you could do things or or maybe you should have done things it would have had a different outcome uh, anger and sadness and then acceptance so um you know, when you lose something, let's say a pet or a loved one, uh, there's some finality to that experience. And so you just kind of go through these different emotions, these different moments, um, and you bounce back and forth, and then time seems, seems normal. And then there may be a memory, a smell, a song uh, that pops in your head or in your heart, and then you may kind of re-experience those things. And over time, they should probably be less frequent, um, not last as long and not be as intense. Um, and that's just kind of how that goes if you're working the grief process. I think what we're seeing, um, and, and the world for that matter, but what we're seeing in our practice is that um, there's grief around uh, school. Um, there's grief around events. There's grief around things that people are looking forward to. Um, but specifically with school, I know, you know, the governor delayed his uh, decision on what he's going to do with those three options of school as it was with some masks and social distancing, but everyone's there doing the hybrid approach, which is uh, half the people there one day and half the people there at home and then flip flopping or the the what we just did was a wrapped up was everyone's at home doing online learning. You know, I don't want to speculate. I, I feel like uh, I think that. Um, given the circumstances, it's hard to imagine that we would do option one where everyone returns to school uh, and we do the social distancing piece and wear a mask right now. Um, so we're probably looking at the hybrid approach or the third approach. I know with some of the smaller schools, the private schools, they're starting to, to do a hybrid approach um, and what they're telling the students. So I, I think there's some things that we need to consider and be aware of as caregivers. Um, that either you or your child is going to go through. And, and that ranges from um, college. And that's really where this kind of idea popped in my head this week is a lot of the students that are going back to college have gotten their um, classes. And a month ago, they were told they would be in person. And now the majority, if not all of their classes, are online. Um, with maybe one class in person or doing a hybrid approach. Um, and there's a lot of anger uh, with that. There's a lot of sadness with that. Um, in some instances, you know, some of these people are freshmen, so they haven't even experienced a, a, a fully functional year as college was meant to be or it used to be. Um, and there's great upheaval and there's great uncertainty, even with uh, are we going to go back to campus? Um, what's that going to look like? Am I going to do my classes in my dorm? Um, can I go to the library? How are we going to do the food? Uh, you know, there aren't events like you would have on a, on a daily basis or certainly a weekend basis. Uh, those are up in the air. So there's, there's a lot of uh, sadness. There's a lot of anger. Um, when it comes to what COVID is doing with those decisions that are being made and that will continue to be made, not to mention the anxiety of uh, is this really going to be what it is or could that also change because there's data and precedent that what they were told is, is not what is happening. Um, so they're at a minimum, they're feeling bummed. Um, and I know as a caregiver, you're, you're probably struggling with what is the best decision? Do we send our child back to school? Uh, do we pay the money to go back to school? Um, 
is it worth that out of state tuition for some of the some of your, your kiddos that are going out of state? Um, there's a lot of decisions that are having to be made and they're having to be made pretty rapidly um, by the time between now and when you're heading back to school, which could be a month or less uh, for some of your kids. So I think that is occurring and you may be seeing that and, and with the grief process, people don't move at the same rate. Um, and since this thing is not decided, it still invokes a lot of that anger and sadness and uneasiness because nothing is permanent right now. Um, you know, and, and this is true. I mean, they could even go back to school and at some point, if, if it gets worse, the powers that be could decide that they need to send everybody home. Um, and that's a reasonable, um, reasonable thing to expect given the circumstances of what's going on in our country. Um, so there's a lot of emotion that's going on um, in, inside of, I imagine as a caregiver, but also inside of, uh, of, our, of our kids um, and our clients. So I just wanted to give some perspective that there will be times that you may see some irritability uh, and, and some malaise and apathy uh, with, with your kids and maybe yourself too. Um, along with what we're going to deal with when it comes to, you know, our K through 12 um, kids and what that's going to look like. Uh, I, I think there was probably a hope and a sentiment at some point that, you know, even if you're going to be working from home, which I know a lot of people will, maybe some even through the end of the year, uh, that your kids could go back to school. Um, and that, you know, this juggling act that you've had to do for the last couple of months, um, there would be a little bit more semblance of a routine. Um, and quite honest, a, a time for you to be mo maybe more productive where you wouldn't have to juggle and wear so many hats. Um, so there's grief around that. There's grief around, uh, you know, kids that are in productions or plays or clubs or debate club or, uh, you know, pick a sport um, or in these travel leagues. Uh, things that they were looking forward to and hoping uh, to do. Uh, there, there's going to be anger and sadness around those things because a, a lot of those things are either on hold um, or, or they're just not going to happen at all. Um, and a lot of those decisions are, are being made right now, which all causes that uncertainty as well. But just understand, have patience, uh, ask the question, you know, how are you doing? Where are you at? What is your temperature? Uh, you know, to use the language that we use here in the practice just to kind of get a, a glimpse and, and a gauge of where your kid's at um, and, and, and where you're at, you know, ask each other uh, as caregivers, you know, where are you at? Because uh, a lot of times we'll make the assumption that, you know, people process things and think the way I think and do the way I do. And that's just not the case when it comes to grief. Uh, it, is, it is important to honor it and deal with it and lean into it when you have time. And, and be able to go through those things that allows you to move through that continuum uh, as much as you can. And then when you've got to do the things you got to do, then you do them. Uh, but that way it's not just sitting over there in the corner being ignored and growing in power and it will become uncomfortable at some point if you do decide to deal with it. So it's important to use the tools that we've talked about before in some of these behind the door series. Uh, that decision tree to kind of figure out where you are, what your temperature is, to see how bad it is, uh, and then normalize some of the things that they're experiencing. Uh, we, uh, men in particular, does a great job with grief uh, when, it, when it comes to those things that we've lost, but all the therapists now, Kevin, Sade, myself, uh, Michael, and men, this is intertwined into into what we're doing as far as therapy goes and how we're trying to educate our consumers and the public about what's going on and that you're going to see a range of emotions and you're going to see a range of behavior because of those emotions. And uh, it, it's important to understand where they are uh, emotionally so you can understand how they're reacting. It may change how you view it and it may change how you how you respond to it. Uh, and then also to make sure to take time for yourself as caregivers, take care of yourself as caregivers. You can use the same tools that we've been teaching in Behind These Doors series and what we teach, uh, you know, the clients every day, uh, how, how to use your tools. And your tools are specific for you. Um, but do those things so you're also in a good emotional place so you can help yourself but also help your kiddo. Uh, and, and the more level-headed you are, it, the easier it is to make these tough decisions because they're dilemmas. Uh, there isn't an easy decision. 
there's not you know a one answer in, in some of these circumstances so it makes it tough um, so that's all I really wanted to say I, I just wanted to give some perspective that you know, and, and give you some tools for what's going on help you understand that a lot of these things that are occurring some of its worrying anxiety but some of it is just the grief it's just loss of uh, life returning back to how we thought it was and and now that these decisions are being made just kind of working through that process and and dealing with facts as they are right now and not getting too far ahead of how you think they may be um, but that allows you to work through that grief process uh, and just ask each other how they're doing or how you're doing uh, it is also a very important thing I'll give it a, a minute or so just to, um, there's no slides accompanied with this, but I'll just give it a minute or so to see if anybody has any questions. Um, and if not, we'll wrap it up. Uh, next week uh, for number seven, I will, unless something comes up or if I get some suggestions for things that you may be interested in or hearing more about, I will uh, work on the habit loop. And then the week after that, we're going to talk about popularity. Uh, in the context of science and kind of help you understand why uh, sometimes your, your teenagers are so obsessed with their phones and social media. Um, and so we'll, that's kind of what we're setting the table for for the next two weeks. Uh, and then down the road, maybe in August, we're going to have some guest appearances through some of our other therapists that they can kind of share some of the things that they're doing and, and you can get to see them in action as well. So I don't see any other questions. I appreciate everyone being here. Uh, it's just part of what we're trying to do to break the stigma of counseling, just to share a little bit about how we do uh, therapy, what it looks like, um, hopefully demystifying some of those things. I hope everyone has a great weekend, stays healthy, happy 4th of July, and we will see you next week.